Hey everyone, this is Black Legacy, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be talking about Mining Collective, specifically how to play this map in the solo queue. Just to emphasize that point, I'm not talking about any kind of group setting, whether it's casual or competitive, where teams can organize much more complex strategies. But when you have 12 people who are not always communicating with each other, didn't plan ahead, have varying skill levels and varying builds, you need some kind of simple strategy that everybody understands and can execute. Fortunately, on Mining Collective, there's an easy-to-follow strategy such that if most of the team follows it correctly, your team's chances of winning is increased dramatically. Since the map is fairly symmetrical, this strategy also applies whichever side you start on. For people who have been playing for a long time, this shouldn't be a surprise. Your team needs to control the center platform starting from the beginning of the match. What may not be so obvious is how to make people do this, and I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, for players who are new to the game, I'll try to explain why taking the center is so important. Without much communication and guaranteed coordination in the solo queue, players tend to rely on the proximity to other teammates for protection. This leads to the death ball effect where the majority of the team is clustered together. If you look at Mining Collective, it's a pretty small map and there are only a few places where such a death ball can congregate. Staying at the F or C lines puts you at a low ground with few maneuvering options, so these aren't good places. The 3 and 6 lines can be good if you can get everyone on your team to stay there, but since there are always players who don't have the patience, especially those with short-range loadouts who have to wait even longer to engage, so there are some risks to asking that from your team. The open spaces around the center platform in D4 and E4, D5 and E5 are very vulnerable, which leaves the center platform itself. That center platform gives protection to close-range mechs, allowing them to engage anybody who's coming up, and the mid- and long-range players are at a position where they can shoot at most positions on the map. If any team wants to approach the center, the direction of their approach is easily seen and their entrance is predictable, since it's limited to the two ramps on the two sides. Therefore, you should be able to see that if you can only hold one position on the map, the center is the best. I've shown these positions on Smurfies, but you can go into testing grounds if you're unfamiliar with these grids. Even with a simple strategy as this, many teams can't execute it properly. Some players are relatively new and they simply don't know. Some players know what to do but are afraid to move up to the center knowing that likely the enemy team is already going to be there. Some try to take the center but because their team doesn't support them, they die trying. A little coordination before the match starts goes a long way. The first thing you should do is to communicate to your team to go to center and don't stop on the ramps. This is important because it addresses two issues. Number one, it lets newbies know what to do. And number two, it tells others who are thinking about going up the ramp that they will have support. The more people who are telling their team this, the better. Once two or three people agree on the same thing in team chat, generally speaking, I found that the rest of the team will follow. One other thing is that if the mode is conquest, tell people to ignore the caps. If you can get a big kill lead within two minutes, you can catch up on caps very quickly. So winning by caps on mining is extraordinarily rare in solo. Inevitably, some people will ignore this, but hopefully you keep those to a minimum. The next step depends on what kind of mech you are and when you get to the center. If you're a light, you should be doing normal light things, that is harassing the other team and trying to disrupt their movement. If you're able to get an assault to stop and turn around, that's a big win and will make controlling the center easier for the rest of the team. If the enemy team is near the ramp, that's an easy place to get behind them and score a quick kill. If you see snipers, try to take them out. Mediums and faster heavies will likely get to the ramp first. If so, move up the ramp and off to the side like this. This way, you don't block people behind you and gives you cover in case you get overwhelmed by the other team. When people see you go up early, that gives them more confidence to go up themselves. Shoot the other team as they come up and drop strikes on their side of the ramp to stop the enemy from pushing up. Strikes are extremely helpful not only to do damage, but to make the other team hesitate. Even a little 5 second hesitation can give your team a lot of time to move a couple of more mechs up the ramp than them. There's a special case of a JJ medium spawning on the 6th line side. Here you can position yourself on one of the taller platforms and shoot to the center, but I'll demo that later. As a bigger, tankier mech, you'll probably arrive a little later. At this point, two things can happen. If your team is already up there, then move up and shoot the other team. You should be able to tank a little bit as well, but don't die unnecessarily. Drop strikes if the other team hasn't fully come up yet. If your team is not up there and you know the enemy team already has the center, just accept your fate that you're probably going to lose. Otherwise, I would take a chance and go up and hopefully they're not there yet. If they are, then move off to the side and hopefully you're not dead. But your team is probably going to lose anyways. Once you've controlled the top, it gets a lot easier. You should be shooting anyone who tries to come up the ramps, paying attention to the other side of the ramp as well. If the enemy mechs are rotating around the center, 
they should be separated enough such that your team can pick them off one by one. So what do you do if the enemy has a top? As I said, the chances of you winning is slim, but I think your best bet is to have a group of three to five mechs rotate around to the other side of the ramp and try to strike the back. However, you're still in an inferior position and you're mostly relying on surprise to knock out a few of their mechs from the back. It's fairly predictable, however, and the move is easily seen by anyone paying attention. Coordinating this is not hard if everybody is on comms, but again, in solo, even simple maneuvers like this is a real struggle. In the following demo, I'll explain in detail how all of this works in practice. In this match, I'm in a laser vomit hellbringer. This isn't the best mech for this map, mostly because the solo queue mining is mostly close range and the DPS on this build isn't very competitive. However, we'll do the same thing as we would in a higher DPS build. As mentioned in Conquest, I'm telling people to ignore caps. Right now you can see that we have two assaults who could have gone up the center, but hasn't done so yet. This could have been really bad for us, except the other team hasn't come up the center either. At this point I go up and see a Blood Asp on the other side. I know I can't take it on 1v1, so I'm going to move off to the side. Fortunately, the Blood Asp doesn't realize he's at a competitive advantage against me, and decides to back down. This leaves the Warhammer 2C coming up alone while my friendlies are just getting up the ramp. The Warhammer and Blood Asp together would have had enough firepower to challenge me and the other mechs coming up, but instead, the Warhammer dies alone, having done only 13 damage in the end. I've also dropped the strike on the other side to deter other mechs from coming up. At this point, we've moved four mechs up to the center, with a couple still on the ramp. We have the advantage, but the enemy team made a push upwards, moving four mechs into the center as well. However, since we have mechs now shooting their group from the side, as well as from the front, and a couple of mechs preparing to backstab at B5, they eventually lose two mechs at the center, the Warhammer and the Hunchback 2C. And without enough mechs to hold it, they have to rotate off. That hesitation at the beginning of the match really hurt them, and they were not able to put in the firepower at the center. By the end of the engagement, the central fight alone took out three of their mechs, and we also killed another one that was capping somewhere else. The AC2 Jaeger mech that was sniping on the other side was potentially dangerous, but ultimately I think it hurt his team more than it helped, since he had to hide a lot and therefore not contributing sustained damage and sharing armor in a DPS heavy map. This brawler victor never came up the center, and I think he was just rotating around the platform all match. He could have made a huge difference if he did come up, but instead all that firepower and armor went to waste. That Jaeger did do a lot of damage because he was alive until the end, but as you can see, he's hiding for a long stretches of the match, and therefore isn't using his DPS to its full potential. Right now, I'm not in a position to take him on from the front, so my only option is to attack from the side. Target destroyed. Nice. Okay. In a good mining match, damage should be fairly evenly distributed, meaning everyone was able to engage and no one was left idle. If you're in a JJ medium or fast heavy with enough firepower, such as this Hunchback 2C, Vapor Eagle, Quick Draw, Shadow Hawk, or anything like that, and you spawn on the 6th line, you can move up to the elevated platform on the D5, D4 border and provide overwatch on the other side of the ramp. This doesn't really work as well on the other side because it's harder to get up the E4, E5 platform and even when you're there, it doesn't give you much cover on the second level. You need to get to the highest level on the platform to have enough cover and to be able to shoot at the middle of the central area. 
and you can only do that with a medium or heavy build that has multiple JJs. This Hunchback 2CA with a single JJ doesn't have enough lift to do that, so I'm lucky in this case to start on the 6th line. Unfortunately for us, the enemy team controlled the center first, but that firepower from my Hunchback is pushing a lot of them off to the sides. If they had one guy trying to deal with me and the others trying to shoot down at my team, I think they would have pulled off an easy victory. But they couldn't execute this and ended up putting themselves in a bad spot. This wouldn't work as well if I'm in a light mech or small medium since I wouldn't have enough firepower to push them off the platform. Right now, even though they have the top, they're not using that position effectively. You can see the supernova running around trying to find cover and not shooting at anything. And I've effectively taken his firepower out of the match all this time. I see some mechs trying to rotate around my back, and the center is relatively clear now, so a few friendlies and myself move up to the center. The two teams have pretty much traded places, with the score still pretty much even. By taking the better position now, we're able to do what the enemy team wasn't, which is to shoot down at them while they're rotating to come up the ramp. We score a string of kills, ending the match in our favor eventually. Well guys, if you learned something from this video, make sure to give me a like. I hope to do more of these map guides in the future, so hit the subscribe button for more content like this, and I'll see you next time.